Hey, welcome to my updated what I eat in a day for the year 2020. You know I've done a couple of these videos before in the past. If you haven't seen them, you should go and watch them here because it's interesting to see um, you know how my diet has changed and also how it hasn't in today's video I kind of wanted to take a little different approach instead of just taking you through my day to show you like my meals of this day I wanted to talk about how I eat in general the philosophy and the reasoning behind my meal plan and why I believe it works so well for me and what is so different about it than ways of eating that didn't work for me in the past so I'm gonna take you on kind of a journey and talk about my history and all the sort of different ways of eating that I've been through and failed at and struggled with in hopes that it can shine some light on maybe the reason that you're not getting the results you want from your diet if you're frustrated. Of course, if you're loving your diet as it is already and you're not looking to make any changes, then maybe this video will just be entertaining or fun for you to watch. Um, but my hope is, is that I can help provide you some clarity and just some peace of mind with like, how you can actually improve your diet if that's what you want to do. So first I'm going to start by taking you to the grocery store and sharing with you my secret to make grocery shopping not so overwhelming, but help you like put those focus goggles on and go there to get what you need to create an amazing body transformation. So here's how it all begins. What you eat in a day all starts with what you shop for, but it can be totally overwhelming to come here and see all of this food. like so many different various items you just don't know what to start with so that's why having a grocery list can really help you narrow it down and zero in your focus on what you actually need in order to get results and so you can ignore the rest so having a list really helps you just be really targeted with your shopping which will help you so much when it comes to your meal prep okay so that's why I've included a grocery list in all of my programs it's all digital it's all on my phone all I have to do is open up my grocery list this is still more than you need for a week. So I usually just pick my five or six favorite and I start with that. Learning to even grocery shop on a regular basis is a big step for a lot of people I know. That if you're just starting out, if you're young and you're used to your parents doing all the grocery shopping for you, your first step is to learn to grocery shop. Get familiar with it, actually go to the store, make the effort to fill your cart with the right types of foods. vegetables are really great sources of carbs so load up on some of these guys tons of nutrients and it gives you that the kind of carbs you need for energy Cody here's your favorite thing yeah. fruits are also really healthy carb sources for you they add some color to your diet some sweetness so I'm always loading up on fruit as well okay. grapefruits are one of my favorites to add to breakfast lots of vitamin C <laughs> so when it comes to your protein sources, this is all the stuff you want to be shopping for. All these foods are very high in protein, have a lot of good nutrients for you to help you um, build muscle and burn off fat. So shopping for um, a good amount of protein sources that you can cook in bulk and then just have ready to go in your fridge. It really makes your meal prep so much easier. So make sure that you're loading up on a combination of seafood and then also poultry and meat so you have variety. It's not always the same source every day. Spices, like in this section, are what make your food interesting and delicious and just crave-worthy. So you want to really take advantage of all these spices because they don't add any additional calories to your food, but they take the flavor to the next level. Salt and pepper are go-to staples that I think are really underrated and underused. A lot of people are afraid to use salt, but I use pink Himalayan salt on every single meal that I cook at home, and it is healthy for you. It's not the same like sodium spiking salt that you find in packaged foods. You can add your own salt to your meals to make them so good. And then I also love pepper. Now, if you're looking for healthy beverage options that are other than just water, all of these teas are a great place to start flavoring up your water with. Hot tea is so good for you, and it also like 
fulfills that craving and wanting to drink something other than water. Also coffee. I love coffee and I'll have at least like two coffees a day. So loading up on this kind of beverage instead of things like soda and juice. For your healthy fats, you want to include a lot of like olive oil, avocado oil is my new favorite thing to cook with. Also still love coconut oil over here. Use that a lot for baking. Um, and then you also want like a spray oil for when you're sauteing or scrambling eggs or something like that. So this fulfills your healthy fats. I'll also include things like nuts and avocado. For dressing my salads, I never buy any of these pre-packaged salad dressings. I always make my own with just olive oil, vinegar, and then my own seasonings and spices. A lot of these have sugar in the ingredients and they have soybean oil or some other oils that you may want to avoid. So I pass on all of these, but I will buy things like mustard and like pickles and any different type of mustard, Dijon or whatever you like, spicy is good. Um, pickles and olives also are great condiments to add more flavor to your foods. Okay, when it comes to milk, I go for non-dairy milk like almond milk and I always get the original unsweetened, whichever brand you want, I like organic. And yeah, I don't really go for dairy milk except when it comes to my coffee, I like half and half. <laughs> you go through a lot of eggs. Um, eggs are really great. In the morning, I usually eat about three eggs every day. And this guy can probably crush at least two. Frozen fruit, major staple in our house. We go through a lot of this in protein smoothies or just like as a healthy dessert after dinner. I usually opt for the big family pack of mixed berries. Does that look good? Yeah. All right, so once you come home from the store and you have bags full of all these raw ingredients, then what are you supposed to do with them? This is what we call meal prep. And some people like to do it in a time-saving way where you're cooking all the things and putting them in Tupperware and then storing them in your fridge. That way, when time comes to eat, you just grab and go. Other people want things to be fresh and hot when they eat them, so you can just leave the raw ingredients in your fridge and then cook as you go. That is personally the way that I do it, but that's only on days when I'm working from home or not working. If I have appointments or things going on, life is busy, then I do need to pack ahead of time and put things in Tupperware and have them ready to take with me. If you keep on getting to that place where you're like, I'm hungry and I don't know what to eat, then you'll continuously make the most convenient, probably not the healthiest, and probably the cheapest and just whatever is in front of you type of choices. Now this is not the best way to support your body goals. It's much better if you portion your meals for yourself, you cook things at home, you know what kind of oils are in it. You're just, you're gonna have much better results if you have thought out your meal plan instead of just going with the flow of whatever is available. So now, like I talked about, let's dive into one of those failures um, at a time in my life when I was following a restrictive diet and not doing it properly. So I wanna show you some of the mistakes that I was making and why it wasn't something that I could stick to forever. I'm gonna open up this spreadsheet for you from 2012, Jessica Rumba's vegan diet experiment. So at this time in my life, I was struggling to find nutrition that worked for me and I was trying all the different things. So vegan diets were very popular. A lot of people were talking about them. There was a lot of like hype. People were saying that you wouldn't be able to build and maintain enough lean muscle without animal protein in your diet. And I took it upon myself to see if that was true. I was really, really curious if I could still compete in fitness competitions without the animal protein sources in my diet. So going 100% vegan for a four month time period in preparation for a show. So it wasn't just a vegan diet, but it was specifically a vegan diet with the goal of getting as lean and shredded and toned as possible. So let's dive into my spreadsheet. Trust me, I don't do this still today, but this was a big part of my learning process and my journey and it's something that really helped me figure things out. So it's not that I recommend you do the spreadsheets like this, but I'm just sharing with you how I've learned so much. Okay, so taking a look through here at the first things I want you to notice is that I'm not necessarily following a plan. I'm actually just logging foods that I already ate or making choices on the fly and then writing them down after they've happened. And I can tell because breakfast just keeps on changing and it's just a bunch of various options of different things that are vegan. 
So basically my only plan of action was to not eat animal products, which is the first mistake I was making. I didn't really have a detailed plan. I just had a broad general plan of one thing that I was not gonna eat. Basically I'm focusing on the negative, which I just feel like it is a setup for failure because when you're always focused on what you shouldn't do, it kind of just makes you want to do it more. And there were times in here where I did like slip up or eat something that had seafood in it or eggs in it or something. So I think, you know, having such a strict restriction, it made me want to cheat more. And lastly, just notice that there is really no mention of macros or balance in the diet. I didn't even know what macros were at this point in my fitness journey. I was completely unaware that the balance of my macronutrients really had much to do with my results at all. I mean, I think I knew for sure that an emphasis on high protein was important, but I had no understanding of where carbs and fat should be at all. I don't think I was even tracking my calories or even had a set calorie level to aim for. I was literally just focused on eating only vegan foods. So this was just a time in my life where I was really unstructured. I was just focused on what I'm avoiding and not really not, not trying to gain, just trying to lose. I feel like that's where a lot of people make the mistake in their diet is they're not thinking about the nutrients they should be feeding their body. They're just thinking about the junk food they want to avoid and how they want the weight scale to go down. And everything is like, I shouldn't eat this or I shouldn't eat that or you know, feeling really bad about indulging or just enjoying food. And that's just what I hope to help you release in your life. And you can come to this place where you're actually eating on purpose and from a really good place, like really wanting to nourish your fit body and become as fit as you possibly can. So that's where I feel like I'm at today. I feel much more like at peace with the way that I eat. I feel like it's something I can sustain for the rest of my life. And really that's thanks to meeting Brad and learning about living lean. Like he took fitness from such a different approach than I had ever discovered before. Like in my world, it was all about getting fit, like working really hard to get as fit as possible, but then taking a break or going on vacation from that and relaxing back into old habits. And then when you're unhappy, then going back to your fitness habits again. And I know that a lot of you are still in that place. I know it. Living lean is just a whole different game. It's like you enter this journey with a focus on who you do wanna become and you feed your body in a way that does support your dreams and your goal body, and you'd find a sustainable way, something that you can do forever and ever because you're so happy and content with it. It's so different than a restrictive diet that you can only do for so many weeks. Living lean isn't about that. You need to find a pattern of eating that allows you to have your favorite foods, but that is the majority focused on foods that are good for you. Okay, so here's my typical day of eating. Breakfast is almost always like an egg scramble plate, sometimes a protein source added to this, side of citrus fruit, and lunch is like a big ass salad is what we call it, which is basically a big bowl of greens, lots of produce in there with protein as well. And then after my workout, I'll have a post-workout smoothie, which is whey protein and fruit. And then after that, I might have another snack, which is like another plate of protein and vegetables, or maybe it'll be something like fruit and nuts. This The snack can definitely vary. Um, the dinner is pretty much the same every night. It's like a protein source. A lot of times we have slow cooker meat or grilled meat along with vegetables and like potatoes for a starchy carb. There's so much variety within the diet because although the staples are, and the nutrients remain the same, I change up the flavors constantly by using various sources of these nutrients and then also seasoning and spicing them up. So I never get bored of eating this way. I always feel amazing, energetic, strong, and healthy, and that's what I love the most. But also, I do enjoy treats and we do have pizza once a week. Since I started Living Lean, I've eaten more pizza and treats and drinks than I ever did when I was on these crazy restrictive fitness diets. But I also have the best body composition that I've ever had. And this is even after two kids came out of me. You guys, I know that I'm not special. I'm not like some genetically gifted freak who can just easily maintain fitness with no effort at all. If you know me at all and you've been following me over the years and you've seen the amount of effort I've put in, the amount of dedication the amount of consistency and the hard work that I've put towards my dreams and making them a reality. So I know that if I can do it, 
so can you. And I also know that you can do it in a way that you actually truly love and enjoy and it's not going to feel like torture or feel like chores and you're not gonna hate the food that you're eating and you're not gonna dread the workouts that you're doing. It's everything can be fun and enjoyable and delicious and you can love your results too. And now, you know, in the year 2020, I'm actually really happy and grateful for the failures that I've been through with my own body so that I could teach you this, you know, cause I would have never learned all the stuff that I learned unless I had myself gotten to those really frustrating times and made those mistakes that I've made. So I just hope that you can have it easier than I did and learn from the mistakes that I made instead of having to learn the hard way yourself. Once I finally started learning things and figuring out a sustainable way of getting fit, something that wasn't gonna completely backfire on me, that's when I started writing programs. And Formula for Women was the first one that I ever did that was focused on sustainable transformation. And that's truly what it is. Like the first time I did it, I was able to drop 4% body fat and maintain those results. I have never gained that body fat back because it is such a sustainable way. Obviously I've done lots of programs since then. I've even done Formula for Women three times since then. You know, it's a continuous journey. Like maintaining a lean physique is a continuous journey. It's not something you just do for 12 weeks and then you never touch it again. It's like the 12 weeks is like your jump start to get started and then maintenance mode is after that. So I just feel like, you know, if you've been inspired by me over the years or you've kind of watched my journey change and grow and you've seen me um, go through transformation and you just, you wanna know how I did it, I hope that you will just take the plunge and do my program and follow it and see for yourself what can happen and, the, and just notice the big difference between sustainable fitness and short-term fitness. Because a lot of programs that you might find on the market are just focused on getting you as lean as possible, no matter like how much, how many hours a day it takes or how much tilapia and asparagus you have to choke down. I understand that people want rapid results, but what about long-term results, you know? I think it's time that you start thinking of your fitness in a different way. It's like, what good is it to be lean for a couple of weeks when you know what you really really want is to live lean for the rest of your life okay so link to formula for women is down below if you want the grocery list that i followed in the grocery store and you want to see kind of the nutrition that worked for me in order to lose that much body fat and the workouts that i swear by the system of workouts that i work by it's not just random workouts it's a structured three phase program so it's all in the link in the description box below I hope this was helpful for you, more helpful than just seeing what I eat in one day. So chat with me in the comment section below and just let me know about where you're at with your nutrition journey and how you're feeling about your results and, and what changes you might make based on this video. I'd love to know. So I'll see you at the next one. Thanks for watching and keep living lean. No guilt for enjoying foods that I love. Mm -hmm. Mushrooms?